Somebody said, I, somebody said, man, I want to I wanna get strong in the spirit. And, and what do I need to do? Somebody said, I wanted to keep myself, I want to keep myself over in the love of God. I'm, you know, you, you say, you just preach it and you said, he that dwells in love dwells in God. And that if we could come to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that there we would be filled with all the fullness of God. How do I do that? Mom brasa every day. Hey, listen, back on the and Mateo. Listen, have you have you ever noticed it's really it's very 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 difficult to flow in the anointing when you're all stressed out? <laughs> you know, the most of the things that go on in our life that are keeping us from from flowing in the anointing, increasing in the things of the Spirit, really very practical things, really very practical realities of our life, and. And so, you know, it's going to talk to you once again about identifying those. If you, if you commune with stress, if you commune with worry, if you commune with doubt, you're, never, you're not going to get strong in faith, okay? You build up yourself in your most holy faith. And, and sometimes I think that people relegate holy faith to the idea that, I, oh, I believe in Jesus. And I, I believe that Jesus is God. And, and I believe that if you call upon the name of the Lord, you're saved. Well, holy faith is much bigger than that. Holy faith really is all about you and I fundamentally being allowed by a miracle of God to become to come into union with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I sat here on Wednesday night and everybody was in a, everybody was really in a posture of receptivity. You know where that posture was? Everybody was bowed. Everybody was bowed down. I my, my heart's bowed down. Well, I keep my, I can keep myself bowed down. You know, walking around. I, there's every time there's every once in a while I stand up. But every time I stand up, I got me to deal with. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm not going to have his solution, solution. But if I keep myself bowed down. Now, we, everybody was bowed down. You know what? I'm just sitting there in the place speaking, just, just sitting there prophesying, just, just speaking on, in the first person on behalf of the Lord, declaring those things from heaven. I mean, I got in my truck. It took me quite a while to quit prophesying. <laughs> because it turns into that. Now, how about, why can't we just stay there? Why can't we just, why can't we? I used to call it um, an altar call consciousness. And it's being, having that altar, altar call awareness of his presence. Well, now, I mean, we can have actually, I'm, for me, I, I, would, I would move that beyond the altar call experience or the altar call consciousness to the actual interaction with his presence. Holies of holies, tabernacle in his presence, face-to-face -face consciousness, and to, and, to, and to live there. That's where then ultimately we find ourselves maturing in all the things that the Holy Spirit wants to instruct us in and teach us. See, if I'm in the school of the Spirit, one of the most important things is I've got to understand, well, what is it the Holy Ghost is teaching me? Well, some people believe, oh, he was teaching you the word of knowledge. No, not really. Oh, well, he's teaching you new miracles. No, not really. He's going to do that through you. He wants that. And we will hear about, hey, we're having the school of the Spirit. Oh, then we're going to go. What are we going to do? We're going to go over there and learn how to give each other a word of knowledge. N no. Maybe. That's not the point. The point is the kingdom of God. The point is fundamentally interacting with the Lord. Learning to walk in his nature and his character learning to watch it, walk in his ways, learning to participate with the things that he's doing, you know. Um, my wife and I, we woke up this morning. It's good to have you in the meeting, by the way, baby. How'd you get here? Uh, we woke up this morning, and, and, you know, we just said to encourage each other. said the most important thing for us to do is stay happy all day. And, and we, uh, we know that if we stay happy all day, that we will more than likely have a measurable indication <laughs> that we walk in the Holy Ghost. And you know what, if, 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 you, if we made things that simple, then all of a sudden we'd have to start really looking at ourselves and going, wait, wait a minute, you know? How is it, what, what happens when I quit, when I stop obeying the fundamental rules of life, of, of just being happy and giving things? I mean, if there's anything that underscores being filled with the Spirit, it's being happy and being thankful. Because you don't sing and make melody in your heart to God unless you're happy and thankful. And here the Holy Ghost has given to us the ability. He says, I'm going to give you the ability to build yourself up. 
I'm going to give you the ability to be strengthened, literally to be strengthened. Because I think that when we listen to the translation in, um, in the King James and we hear, we hear, hear build ourselves up, then we might, we might tend to take that wrong, that it's some kind of self-serving thing we're doing. No, really it's being strengthened. So the Lord says, he gives a command. He says, be strong in strength of the Lord and power of his might. Well, how do I get that? I've got to be strengthened. I mean, I, I heard one Holy Ghost woman say one time, she said, if you want to pray any prayer for me, you pray this prayer, that I should be strengthened by the Spirit in my inner man. Because so long as I'm being strengthened by the Spirit, I can do anything. So long as I know how to be strengthened by the Spirit, ain't nothing going to trouble me, nothing going to get in my way. We'll let the smallest, simplest, ridiculous little things get in our way. You know what? God ain't, Father ain't, Father ain't going to be blessing you. You're not going to be in the favor of God, the miracle provision of God, sitting there worried and all upset. You're just not going to do it. You're not going to get it. And the Father said, okay, just go ahead and be upset. See how that works out for you. Go ahead and be all tied up in knots about your program. And then when all of a sudden we realize that that's keeping me from a miracle, man. Ha! That's keeping me from walking the gift of faith. I've been privileged to know a lot of wonderful men of God, and I believe that everyone says with one voice, if you take all the gifts and you stack them up in front of me and you say you are allowed to choose one and only one, what gift is that going to be? And every one of them, and I'm talking about people who've had great signs and wonders and mighty manifestations of the power of God in their life, put Wigglesworth in the list, every one, and they say, I'll take the gift of faith. If I have the gift of faith, I can do... I, We'll be fine. In fact, with the gift of faith, we'll step into all the rest of them. Give me, if I've got to take one, give me a gift of faith. Well, what happens is you begin to understand that that really is probably the most important area that you want to learn how to function, flow, and operate in, in, the, in the Holy Ghost. And, and <clears throat> I believe that one of the biggest things that people are challenged with is this. They're not, they're not recognizing those things they allow in their life and in their thinking that is actually working counter. It's not even the issue of being yielded to the Holy Spirit or following Him or learning more of the details and, 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 and the ways, if you would, of moving, functioning, flowing in the gift of faith. It's literally the communion and the allowing of all of these crazy self-motivated, self-interest things these concerns, these worries, these doubts, these unbeliefs that will overwhelm our hearts that actually keeps us from, well, in fact, it's fortifying us and strengthening us and enlarging our ability to be that much more in doubt and unbelief and stressed out and you know, all the rest of the stuff, okay? Really, the Lord makes it very simple. He says, faith works by love. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, what an indicator. Like, I'm just really, under, I'm trying to figure out whether or not I'm walking in the Holy Ghost. No problem. We can help you with that really quickly. I, I want to understand how to make a connection with the Holy Ghost. Stay, keep that connection and then recognize when I've lost that connection. When you're screaming and hollering, you have lost the connection. Huh? When you're all stressed out and wringing your hands and oh, going, oh, no, no, you've lost the connection. Because bottom line of it is, reality of, is this, reality of it is this. Everything that's going on good in your life, God's doing it without your help. All the things that you've done that are really good and valuable, God did it without your help. He did it without your help. All the rest of the great things and good things that Father still wants to do in your life, he's just going to do it. Really, by and large, without your help, he's going to do it because you're going to trust him. And you're going to, you're going to learn how to basic, in walking in the Holy Ghost, he's going to teach you how to trust Father. <laughs> he's going to teach you how to cast all your cares upon him. And not, you know, 10 days later, you know, or <laughs> not two hours later, but 10 minutes later. I used to tell people, okay, now you get five minutes. You're a beginner. You get five minutes. Be mad for five minutes. Be angry for five minutes. Upset for five minutes, you know retaliate for five minutes, un be in unforgiveness for five minutes, set your clock because you only get five minutes to revel in your whatever it is you're reveling in, to then repent, let go, and turn your heart back over to the Lord. Let's walk in the Spirit. Father, I want you to learn how to walk in the Spirit. Is that, that's participative. One of the things that I've wanted to do over the past 
30 days, when the Lord hit me with this about 36 days ago, as I said, Lord, how, wh what do I need to do to help people quantitate for themselves their interaction? How do folks realize that whether or not they're really making your word a significant part of their life? Right. Give, them, give, them, give them a reading program in 90 days. 30 minutes is significant. I mean, it should be more like three hours, but it's significant. We got, I can't sit. I can't sit. I can't. God, the Holy Spirit, is so wonderful to us. He doesn't set unreasonable goals that we're trying to hit, and we just become so exhausted because we can't do it. He builds us up. He strengthens us up. Strengthens us. But you know what? You're going to have to learn. You're going to have to go into training to learn how to get this thing done. And, you know, if, if five minutes is all you can handle... And the rest of it's got to be for you. Well, then we'll start with five minutes. If Father is amazing, he doesn't say, he doesn't say, it don't count till it's at least 30 minutes. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a, fair, there's a fair bit of evidence that I have that Father believes that. Because I'm telling you, there's a many, many times in my life that it just really, I didn't touch heaven until there was, I, I, there came a, life, a time in my life where I said, I'm going to pray until I touch heaven. Well, what happens, you know, if you are around my house, you'll hear me walk around praying, and sometimes it'll just be real quiet, and then I'm just praying, you know, just talking to the Lord. And then other times you hear me screaming and hollering and, and I'm bringing the roof down. I'm just simply available for the Lord to use me to begin to intercede through me for my, for my, for my, house for my children for the things of the ministry for the things of the church but how did that happen it happened in a practical application of giving myself over to something that the holy spirit wants to teach us to do how many times did the word of god tell us to pray i mean if you look at jesus he goes and he prays all night did he go and pray all night on it on the times that he had the most you know terrible results he went and prayed all night on the times when he had the greatest results Huh? Is it, is there's so many lessons to prayer. Pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto. Huh? Pray without ceasing. I mean, there's so much on prayer. There's so much command on prayer, and yet there is such a, a, a little understanding, I think, by so many people uh, that this is one of the fundamental things that the Holy Spirit is going to teach you to do. <laughs> this is truly the school of the Spirit. This is where you learn how to prophesy. This is where you learn to be able to uh, come under the influence of the Holy Ghost to begin to move into a place of ministry for other people. Right down on my knees. Huh? Or, or, or walking around. All of a sudden the Holy Ghost begins to intercede through me for somebody else's need. Or begin to intercede through me to prevent something that the enemy would try to do. Whether it is physical or you know, material or spiritual. So this is these are the these these are overlooked. It's like, oh no, let's just get don't we don't want to do that. We want to do the miracles. Show us some miracle. We want to be fascinated by a miracle. And we want to lay the foundation for how the miracle comes. You know, when you begin speaking the word, wow, it's powerful. How many of you understand that if you're going to learn to be led by the Spirit, you're going to learn to speak by the Word? Ha! If you're going to speak by the Spirit, does this sound like too deep? Is this too deep? If you're going to speak by the Spirit, you're going to speak the Word of God. Amen. Is that simple or what? That's why you ultimately, I, have a, I had a period of time in my life. I've been doing this for like 34 years, okay? So you get to be patient with yourself. I had a time in my life where I would just, I would open up the Bible. How canst thou say I am not polluted? I have not gone after Balaam. See thy way in the valley. Know that thou hast done what you have done. That you are swift as a dormitory traversing her ways. A wild ass under the wilderness that snuffed up the wind at her pleasure. In her occasion, you can turn away her away. All they that seek her will not weary themselves in her month. They shall find her. Withhold thy foot from being unshod and thy throat from thirst. But thou saidest, there is no hope, no, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. As a thief, I would start reading the Word of God out loud, because the Word of God pronounced out loud has an impact, it has an effect, it's the most powerful thing on earth. 
And that's a great revelation. Word of God is the most powerful thing on the word. Word of God, that, that's how faith's going to work. Word of God, that's how miracles are going to take place. We don't get the simplest things. And yet, the Lord talked to us about the blessings, you know. And he said, when you go into your house, speak the word. That's what he said in Deuteronomy. When you go out of your house, speak the word. <laughs> when you sit down, speak the word. Huh? When you rise up, speak the word. When you lay down, speak the word. And we don't get it. I want you to get it. I want you to come over into the school of the spirit, understand the fundamental interaction, the basic foundation of how he makes connection with us. It ain't going to take long. And you start, you start just reading the Bible out loud. You read the word out loud. Not just in your mind. Fine, reading the word in your mind is good. But you begin to read it out loud. You begin to enunciate it. It'll change your speech. The word of God will be in your mouth. Oh, the word of God is in my mouth. When? When? The word of God is in my mouth and in my heart. When? Well, when I was reading the word. You never said one thing. You said over there silent. What if through your life, the, the atmosphere of your, of your life and your house was changed because you're speaking the word? You and I have the power and the ability to change the atmosphere of the places that we go. How about we first recognize that we can change our own atmosphere? At will. Huh? We can change the atmosphere of our own lives. We can change the atmosphere of our homes. This is where it's got to start. We can participate in the change of an atmosphere in, in the congregation of God's people. I, I pray you don't have to work too hard around here. <laughs> uh, I pray this gets swept away with the working of the Holy Ghost. Because Father has been so gracious to us. He's ha he has allowed his resident presence to be here. See, any church God starts, Jesus is standing in the midst of it. That's why you see him in the book of Revelation. Standing in the midst of the golden candlesticks. Hallelujah. With the stars in his right hand. What are this golden candlestick? Seven churches. What are the stars? His pastors, his ministers to the seven churches, his messengers. So when you, go to, when you belong to a church or in a church that the Lord has ordained, you got a resident presence. Wow. That's beautiful. And nobody had to come and really work too hard, you know, in, this, in, the, in the sense of changing atmosphere. He is here in charge of the atmosphere. Praise <laughs> God for it. Amen. All I got to do is participate. So isn't he so gracious? Two hands for beginners. We just get in here. Woo! Man. I leave all my troubles behind. I'm just over here in this presence of the Lord. Now I get to learn. Now I get to be developed now to take that with me and, 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 um, and have it in my house, have it in my car driving down the road. Hallelujah. You know, when you leave church, your car, your drive home should be heaven. You know, come on, it should be a lot of stakaila mumbrataya prophesying, speaking to yourself, encouraging yourself. Huh? You might have some troubles on your way into church. <laughs> but, you know, you want to get to the place where you understand that there's laws of the Spirit in terms of how to ascend. There's Psalms and whole chapters of the Bible that are dedicated to how you're supposed to prepare yourself when you come into the presence of the Lord. <laughs> and then you begin to give yourself to that. Say, oh, you know what? I, I, I've got some. I, you know, a friend of mine wrote the song, uh, When the Spirit of the Lord Moves Upon My Heart, I, I Will Sing Like David Sang, I Dance Like David Dance. And so one time I was with him and I said, I got another verse for you. Here it is. You ready? When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I'll do something that David could not do. Because Papa's taking it to a whole nother level for us, you know. He's giving us an ability to, 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 Did you know that here says something that is so wonderful? That is an equipping of God to help me make a transition from being overwhelmed with myself. Oh, the devil. No, you. Over me. Overwhelmed with ourselves. Overwhelmed with our problems. Overwhelmed with our issue. Overwhelmed with our worry. Overwhelmed with our doubt. Overwhelmed with our concern. Whatever it is. As soon as I recognize it, I don't have to stand there all paralyzed by it, aching. Ah. I can immediately make a transition. I can go, Father, forgive me. And it may not come out very good. It may come out like, <laughs> but it might just start there because you're so offline. I hope it's not that. But whatever you got to do to start, 
You know, it's like starting the engine. You know, it's, it's coming really, really slow. But hopefully it, does, it isn't that bad. But you know what? It could be. Just go ahead and lay hold of it because that is the entrance gift. That's what Father gave. Nobody can argue this theologically. You just make, only thing you could do if you wanted to try to argue me theologically is you would have to say that this section of the Bible was only for the first century church and it doesn't belong to us anymore. Otherwise, you have no argument whatsoever. The reality of it is we shouldn't even be arguing anyways because if you're arguing, you're not even in the school of the Spirit. You're in the school of men. You're in the school of religion. Religion. <laughs> True. And I try to put an emphasis on it so it sounds like some kind of drug. Because it is an opiate. Hallelujah. I don't like to look around and see people with question marks in both eyes. Huh? Because I'm talking about the most precious one, most precious person that exists is the Holy Ghost. And so I said, well, how can you say that in comparison to the Father and the Lord Jesus? Because Father said, you say anything bad you want to say about me, but you talk about the Holy Ghost, I'll never forgive you. Huh? Jesus said, you can say whatever you want to say bad, bad about me. Doesn't matter, I'll forgive you. You say something bad about the Holy Ghost, I'll never forgive you. And you know what? When, when God, who loves us so much, starts talking like that, people better, better, they better pay attention. They better listen up. Huh? I don't care what your favorite preacher said. It doesn't matter. He's not God. God has forever settled his word in heaven, and he's made it known to us. And reality of it is, is when people live in that realm, they can't even, you know, I wish that that realm never even came around to the meeting, so I'd never even have to deal with it, you know? People live in that realm, they're never going to have anything from God anyways. You know, here tonight I'm talking about talking to people who want to be in the school of the Spirit. Amen. They're not already telling God what it is they believe. Well, God, this is what I believe. This is what I think you're supposed to be doing. And this is how I believe it's supposed to happen. <laughs> you can, goodness gracious. The Lord's called us to come live by the Spirit, walk by the Spirit, huh? Be led by the Spirit. Walk in the Holy Ghost, live in the Holy Ghost, be led by the Holy Ghost. And he said, if you're not, you don't belong to me. And so why is it that so much religion would fight the school of the Spirit? Why? Because, this, because Satan fights it, and he's right in the big middle of religion. And somebody said, well, I know he's in the big middle of Buddhism. Well, I know he's in the big middle of Hinduism. Now, he's in the big middle of any religion. I don't care what ism it comes with. Okay. So, understanding that, I pray in Jesus' name, you just shove all that nonsense aside. Hallelujah. And just begin to understand that there are some very clear indications of whether or not we're moving with him. And there's some very, in there's, and, and in, in those clear indications, what we discover are the areas where we're not moving with him. Mm -hmm. Because if we're having to focus on the bad things to discover that we're not moving with him, we probably won't detect it. We'll justify it. But if we just recognize, hey, you know, if I'm living in love and if I'm happy and uh, full of thanksgiving and joy, I, I am in, I'm, in the, I'm the right position to ultimately be a part of what God is doing. And if I'm not, if I'm worried, if I'm stressed out, if I'm being tormented, if I'm being harassed mentally, then I've lost a connection that is graciously been provided for me and given to me by the Holy Ghost. Now I want to know how to get right back in. The Lord's made it real easy. Now, if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's hard. Huh? It's hard. It's hard. Because the baptism of the Holy Ghost allows us and trains us into and develops us into what the new birth is all about. The new birth is to be born of the Holy Spirit to do what? Learn the ways of the Holy Spirit. Is that what Jesus said? It is indeed what he said. He said to Nicodemus, he said, you can't comprehend, understand, see, or know anything about the kingdom of God until you're born of the Spirit. 
huh? And when the Holy Ghost comes and you're born of the Spirit, you're going to learn to do what He does, and what He does you can't understand. You can't understand where the wind's coming from. You don't understand how it's generated. You don't understand how it operates, do you? Okay? So, if you're born of the Spirit, then the Holy Ghost is going to be able to help you understand the things of the Spirit which are just as elusive to you and to me as which direction the wind's going. Huh? How it's blowing. How does that function? How does, the, how does it operate? How did you, do you know how the wind is created when the light is parted? Huh? That's, what, that's what the Lord asked Job. When I split the light and create the wind, did you know how that works? Men begin to understand a little bit more once you could split the atom. Once you begin to deal with nuclear fission, huh? And even and 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 nuclear fusion it creates a powerful wind, don't it? It doesn't. When the when a molecule is split, is it? Well, we huh? Still, everybody's still going. Doesn't make any more sense to me. Probably doesn't make any sense any more sense to the person who's an expert in physical chemistry either. Because there's only a couple of people who understand physical chemistry on the earth. Everybody else just sits there and looks worried. <laughs> Especially if you're in the class. Believe me. Right, Stuart? Yes. Jesus help us. I'm glad I'm not having I'm glad that, that I'm that, that's not my life's not devoted to physical chemistry. I praise God that I made it through <laughs> physical chemistry. I went through it. I came out on the other side. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I'm done with it. <laughs> Teach me how to speak with an authority on behalf of God. Somebody said, somebody said, well, Isaiah didn't have that. Well, you're not Isaiah, and neither am I. And he was in another covenant. And besides that, during the days of Isaiah, you wouldn't have even been a candidate. So you're glad you're not in the days of Isaiah. Are you listening to me? Because in the days of Isaiah, maybe one, two people and a whole generation could be anointed to prophesy. Maybe a couple of other times, there was maybe a few more than that. <laughs> they were, but they, they were just in the school. They didn't get to do much. Do you notice that? Got a bunch of school people in the school of prophets, but only one or two people doing the work. All right? Are you with me? Hallelujah. Today, we in the new covenant. And Father said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Wow, you are. Man, I am a candidate. Now, I'm not sitting here, well, Lord, I don't believe that. It's passed away. Who told you that it passed away? Oh, this guy that I knew. And so you're going to believe him more than you're going to believe me? God says my words for, forever settled in heaven. I hear people all the time saying, oh, you know, you just need to preach the word. Preach the word. Okay, well, let me preach the word to you on the day of Pentecost. When the, and then they don't want to listen to that. Build up yourself in most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> and I can go down the list. I mean, because you know what? I, I don't have the book here, but I did this. I did the, one of the reasons that the Lord had me to do the book I did on the four gospels, the sequential events, chronological description of the life and ministry of Jesus, was that people could see almost on every page Jesus doing another miracle. He's he flowing and functioning in some gift of the Spirit on every page. Hello, who did you say you were following, by the way? <laughs> who, did, who, did, who, who did you say your life was being conformed to? Well, then I'm going to understand that connection. How did, when did that happen with Jesus? It happened with Jesus, and that began to be manifest in his life when the heavens were open and the Holy Ghost came upon him and he was filled and baptized in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. True, true. And so he says to us, he says, he says, I'm going to make you my partners. You're my partners. You're co-inheritors with me. People think that they're going to be heirs of God and co-inheritors with Jesus right after they die. No. The Lord wants it. It's about you being heirs of God and co-inheritors with Jesus right now so that you can go everywhere and preach this gospel of the kingdom, which, by the way, he said, I don't need your help until you're first baptized with the Holy Ghost. Hello. And when they were baptized with the Holy Ghost, what happened? They all begin to speak with other tongues. They all begin to speak with other languages. The languages of men? No. Heaven. 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 <laughs> Miracle language. Well, the scripture says they all understood in their own language. Yeah, they all understood in their own language by a miracle. Because <laughs> 120 people are all shouting at the top of their lungs and praying, praising God and, and prophesying and 
and, 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 and moving in this realm. And every, all the people, more than 3,000 people, heard in their own language. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. I wish somebody, I wish somebody would just help the people who don't understand. They just, I need to do a drama. I need to gather 3,000 people together and have, you know, 120 people speaking 12 different languages simultaneously. And then interview the 3,000 and say, how many of you understood? Have 3,000 people who speak 12 different languages, have the whole heterogeneity of it all. You understand what I'm saying? How many of you understood anything? And I guarantee you, all of us without any, in a very safe conclusion would know, well, they didn't understand anything. Nobody would. So this is this thing. The Moru Sadaraneme is a miracle. Did you know that it's a miracle? The scripture says in Mark chapter 16 and verse 17, these miracles, literally, will accompany, follow them that believe. In my name, you'll cast out a devil. That's a miracle. Wow, they went there to the meeting. They cast out devils. Whoa, it was powerful. You speak with new tongues, tongues that have never been heard before. Language, new languages, languages that have never been heard before. Hallelujah. Now, somebody said, well, it's the languages of men. Well, Paul said it's the language of men and angels. And Paul said that when you speak in a, the language, you don't speak to man. That's what he said. So you speak to God. You're talking to God. You speak in mysteries in the spirit. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. I my guy, He's teaching me. I was telling some preachers the other day. I say to them, well, you know, I have a plan uh, for uh, reaching Mecca, uh, Saudi Arabia during Ramadan. And they're looking at me like, what's up? What are you going to do? I said, um, my plan is to be translated in. And I begin to tell them. And so I said, I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm practicing translation. And this one Assumers God preacher, beautiful, wonderful man of God, been a Assumers God preacher for, I don't know, probably close to 40 years. He said, Pastor, tell me, how do you do that? How do you practice translation? I said, are you really interested, bro? I said, are you ready for the atmosphere to change right now? <laughs> we were sitting around a table. And this is a couple weeks ago. I said, are you ready? You ready, for, you ready to see how I practice being translated and he's, he's, he's going yeah man let's do this thing <laughs> and you know what I started doing and it didn't take long and the whole place the atmosphere of the place I mean, it was already good I'm sitting there with two wonderful men of God an evangelist and a pastor, my wife, great woman of God. And so the, good, the atmosphere was already good. <laughs> that is foolishness to men. Is a realm where is a, there is another realm bigger than the earthly realm. There's another realm bigger than the realms of, of carnality and that which men's mind can comprehend. It is the realm of the spirit. It is the realm of the heavenly. The realm of the spirit and the realm of the heavenly are equivalent. They're synonyms of each other. They're the unseen realm in which God is doing all that he is doing. And it has more of an impact and effect upon our lives than anything else. For good or for bad. And it's about time we get over here into the good and stay in the good. I was, you know, some of you have heard me say this, and I can't say it enough, but, I'm, you know, as far as I'm concerned, but I was asking the Lord one day about this particular situation where I prayed a miracle didn't happen. I said, Lord, why didn't the miracle happen? And he says, you need to pray in the Holy Ghost more. You don't pray in the Holy Ghost enough. And so it was at that moment I began to understand why Paul said I pray in the Holy Ghost more than you all. Now, obviously, he said in the midst of the church, I would rather speak you know, just five words with the understanding, 10 words with the understanding, then 10,000 words or 5,000 words, doesn't matter, 100,000 words uh, in an unknown tongue. Why? Because I want people to hear about Jesus and understand how they can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. But ain't nobody in no modern church anywhere running a risk <laughs> of speaking more in the language of heaven 
than all the, the great, you know, storytelling and or, oratory skills, for heaven's sakes, and drama. Preachers are so dramatic. I mean, goodness gracious. Lord Jesus, help us. And the thing about it is, dear people, that's not what Paul was saying in the first place. He was just laying out. He had already laid out for us. What are we going to do then? We're going to pray in the Spirit. We're going to sing in the Spirit. It's supposed to be a part of every meeting. It's supposed to be. It's not something that we got to oh, try to work up and try to do. My goodness, how are we going to flow in this? My, it's so beyond us. It's where you learn how to flow and it's where you learn how to let the Holy Spirit take control. And you know, you, you don't speak out of your own thinking realm anymore. It's, you're not dependent upon your own vocabulary anymore. Literally. I've heard men of God who didn't really have very good grammar skills. Country boys. That then when the anointing of the Holy Ghost came upon them, they began to prophesy. They had eloquent speech. As they stood there. Declaring the wonderful and mighty things of God. How does that happen? What is the atmosphere of that? I mean, I, I, I believe that most of you are really set up here for that because it's really the atmosphere of it is what was going on here Wednesday night at the end of the meeting. Just, just bowing before the Lord. Just committed to the Lord saying, Lord, I want to honor you. I want to reverence you. I love the sacred. Lord, I surrender my life to you. I want to be broken. I mean, the, the revelation the Lord gave by Ruth Anna. Once again, how did she get that? Where did she get that? She didn't learn that from me. She learned that from the Holy Ghost, you see. He speaks. He gives revelation. And it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it's like I said, I don't care if the person's three years old or three, or it doesn't matter how old they are or 100 years old. I love the anointing. I'm attracted to the anointing. I can tell and see the anointing. I try to encourage people and they just come, they, they got this thing or that thing they want to do. They believe God's got them doing this or what. I don't try to encourage them, but I know, I know the anointing. I can recognize the anointing. I love the anointing. And that's where every one of us grow and mature in the anointing because we come to love the anointing. Yeah. We participate with the anointing. The more we participate with the anointing, the more we're attracted to the anointing, the more we recognize the anointing, the more we value the anointing, the more we honor the anointing. That's the fundamental part, once again, of the school of the Spirit, of what the Holy Spirit is going to teach us to do. He's going to teach us to recognize His moving, His presence. Isn't that beautiful? And once again, it might, we've got to understand, this isn't some, you know, thing that happens apart from our participation. It is a very, it's a very fundamental part of our participation. Okay, right now you're on a schedule to read the Bible four times a year. Okay? I'm going to tell you what will happen to you. Without your help, without your, without your intelligence, without your, without your, you know, extraordinary memory skills or whatever, here's what's going to happen. You start reading the Bible that much? Father's at work. There's a supernatural thing going on with the word. You will begin to hear when people speak. You'll begin to hear when it's not the word. They're speaking. It becomes, becomes foreign. Because the word of God becomes so familiar. Not preacher preaching. The word of God. That's why I say that if there's anything that God's people need to do in the critical hour that we live in right now because of all of the delusion, all of the seducing lying spirits, all of the doctrines of devils and religious ideology and philosophy, his people need to go and return to start just reading the Word, reading the Bible. Just read it. Maybe say, I read the Bible. You didn't read it very much if you just, I read the Bible. Because I'm telling you, I have been given, I've re been reading the Bible all my life, and every time I open it up, I'm, I'm right there. I'm just going, I'm overwhelmed with his Word. I'm just as overwhelmed with his word. Hallelujah. Huh? I mean, you know, I was reading the first six chapters of Chronicles today. First Chronicles. That's a lot of names, isn't it? There's some stuff in there for you. There's some stuff in there for you. There's some answers in there for you to some tough questions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Who got the birthright? Who got the birthright? It's in there. Who got the birthright? It was in there. Who got the birthright? Joseph got the birthright. Reuben didn't because of one reason. I'm not going to say it. But I'm just going to tell you, these things will come to you. They'll just come to you. Who got the inheritance? Everyone. All the tribes did. Read it again. They all got it. Read it again. They all got into the inheritance. 
That's what the first six chapter is about. They got an inheritance. Huh? And there, and there is a, in this, in the first six chapters, a special note is given about Judah and what they actually got. Huh? And of course, it's kind of obvious what they got. The kings rose up out of them. The rulers of Israel. Hmm? But they all got the inheritance because that's what the first six chapters are about, right? You never stop here. You can never stop. It keeps getting bigger. All the questions you've got, they'll all go away. All of them, they'll go away. Father, answer every one of them. And then after you finish answering all the questions, he's going to start asking you questions you never thought of and then answering them for you as well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A friend of mine who, you know, I just knew him when I, when I first was introduced to him, I just knew him as the president of the Foursquare Church. But he said, when I first went to Bible school and graduated from Bible school, and I had over 2,000 unanswered questions in the Bible. And, <laughs> and then when he was, was, I think he was 78 years old at the time, he said, I have two left. And all I need is a little bit more wisdom, and I have those answered as well. But people, the school of the spirit is so beautiful. It's so wonderful. It's so beyond the things that we want to limit it to. It's, it's like, well, you know, what do I get to do next? What you get to do next is walk in the Holy Ghost. What you get to do next is be overwhelmed by the realms of his presence, like water busting, breaking forth upon you. Hallelujah. How does that begin? The reading of the word. Not the reading of the word religiously, but Lord, I want to know your word. This is the, see, there's a faith realm. Here's the faith realm. Faith realm is a knowledge realm of something that is supernatural, you, and, and God gives you the ability to know it and to understand it. This is what actually proceeded forth from the mouth of God. Can there be any other, by virtue of that, could there be any other more powerful and profound words, which Jesus said, by the way, is spirit in life that you possibly could interact with? No, and that's why you've heard me say many times, I have never experienced the manifest presence of the Lord and the moving of the Holy Ghost as I have when I open up the Bible and I begin to read it. Was it like that when I first did? No, first began to read the Word? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. But I had a hunger. I had a hunger enough to keep coming back. I had a hunger enough to say, to set principles in my life and say, Lord, your Word, you said, the Lord said, I, I got this one day. I, I heard this. The, the Lord said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I said, okay, Lord, before I eat, I'm going to read five or ten psalms, depending on what time in my life it was, before I take a bite of food. Well, your food's going to get cold, or you go ahead and read just before you eat, either one of the two. I wasn't very bright, so I just waited till the food was there, and I started reading. But from the perspective of the logic of my, how cold my food was going to be, but I, I had the wisdom of God, hallelujah, to recognize, wait a minute, there's something, there's a spiritual activity, there's a spiritual dimension of my life that if I don't engage in, it will never grow and never mature, it will remain dormant. And it is being shaped and formed and developed by the word of God between he and myself personally without anybody else involved. Not in the context of the church, just between he and myself, him and myself. And all of a sudden I begin to understand, wait a minute, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Somebody say, you're talking about works now. No, I'm talking about relationship. I'm talking about love. I'm talking about wanting to hang out with somebody. <laughs> that ain't works. Wanting to hang out with God ain't works. Wanting to walk in the Spirit and learn the things of the Spirit and learn the ways of glory that last forever. That ain't works. That's just, 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 that's just smart. That's just, that's just, that's just knowing what's good, what's good, and, and wanting to participate with it. Hallelujah. That would be works if I didn't want to do it. I just got to do it. Oh, I got to do this. Because uh, if I don't do this, I've gotta, I, I won't be able to go to heaven. Then that's works. You understand? If I don't do this, God won't love me. Hmm? If I won't, well, look, Father loves us. Now, we want to grow and we want to mature and we want to develop. So the Lord has given us an opportunity to come into the fullness of the measure of the maturity, the ministry of Jesus. You think that's just going to happen because you you, you're you good at changing the channels on your television? <laughs> you think that's going to happen because you drive well, because you can read a map good and how to get from here to the other place? Other state? No, it's not going to happen because you participate with things like because you do chemistry well. 
Huh? Because you can solve a math equation. Huh? No, 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 no. Because because you're a good father or you're a good mother. All those things are good. Are you a good husband? Are you a good wife? Those are good. But then they're going to change nothing. It's not, that's not the spiritual dynamic the Father's calling us over into. When I open up the Bible, I go to the school of the Spirit. Huh? When I open up the Word of God, I go to the school of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I don't pray in the morning because I have to. I pray in the morning because I need to. Because <laughs> I, I want to and I, because I need to. Because I, just, I really enjoy joy. Yeah. I enjoy being happy. I, I enjoy being thankful. It's just, it's a difficult situation. Be around people, always stressed out, always at war, always unthankful, always got a problem going on. Goodness gracious. You know, it's like, do I have to engage in this? <laughs> you know, I, I, in, 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 in some places you have to because you at work, huh? And, and I think it would be good advice to tell you, why don't you just start laughing? <laughs> I think they would fire you. But it would be a good thing to start laughing. This is just nothing but stress and worry and nonsense and give me a break. Huh? But you have to work in a profane world. People don't know the Lord. And then you have to learn how to keep yourself in the midst of that. You got to learn how to get out of that quick and, you know, and, and not, not come under that. Because if you expose yourself to that stuff and you come under that and you allow your members to interact with that, it's going to go home with you. I, um, I remember uh, I had just... We just, I just graduated from school, and my world was quite confined to being in school or being in church. And I started working for a biotech company here in San Diego. And I'm driving home, and I'm having these harassing thoughts. I'm like, what on earth is this? And I'm, like, I'm saying, Lord, why on earth is all these thoughts going through my head, all these crazy notions and all these crazy ideas and you know, these really, which is just worldly, lustful things. And the Spirit of the Lord revealed to me that it's the atmosphere of the place. The, the, the people are just so involved all the way around me. They're just involved in all kinds of ungodliness and all kinds of worldliness and all kinds of demonic activity. And so the Lord spoke to me. He said, just take authority over it. Just find it. So the next day, oh, well, I did it right there in the car, but then... You know, you can deal, did you know that you can effectively deal with all temptation if you just go to just some serious prayer? Huh? Oh, God, help me now! Ah! I mean, you get real serious about it, you can deal with whatever problem you got. If you sit there, oh, Lord, I don't want to think like this. Oh, God, help me. Think, 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 think. And it can, not a lot's going to help me. But I'm telling you right now, if you recognize, man, this stuff is the say, demon spirits hunt the souls of men to destroy them. When he does the sin, you're going to get serious. Okay? You're going to get some revelation. And the power of God is going to take it from your squelch and your scream to a Holy Ghost intercession. And, oh, man, a beautiful thing that happens there where you learn how to overcome, be an overcomer, which God is ultimately holding each one of us responsible to be. But I just started doing that. I just hear here in the school of the Spirit. I'm just here in the school of the Spirit. I, these are my thoughts. These, these are my thoughts. I know they're not my thoughts. How many of you... Have you, have you read my article that's posted on website that really is all about having his thoughts? Okay? And having, having him establishing his thoughts in your heart and in your mind. You've read that? You should go read it again. You should go read it again. See, the bottom line of it is, is I know who I am. I'm the temple of the living God. All that stuff's from the outside. If I thought it was on the inside, how am I going to crawl in there and fix that up? If I've been changed by the miracle power of God and I still aren't, and, and still not right, then what, what, what hope is there for me? There is no hope. So I've got to be somewhere. I've got to be changed. So then I've got, I really believe the word of God. I built myself in a, up in my most holy faith. I believe the word of God. I'm living by the word of God. I know the word of God. I'm living by the word of God. Can't live by the word of God. Don't know the word of God. Right? You better watch out. You might be finding yourself living by the word of men. And that's why it's not working out for you. So you know the Word of God. You live by the Word of God. His beautiful thing, we've been born of an incorruptible seed by the Word of God. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, he's put his Word on the inside of us. We purified our souls uh, in obedience to the truth through unfeigned love of the brethren. Wow, participation. Isn't that participation? Oh, yeah, it is. Love is going to always be right in the big middle of everything God's speaking by his Word and doing by his Word. And... Um, you know, but I just reckon it would allow me then to recognize what's coming at me from the outside. 
and how to hook up with all, what's on the inside. Who's on the inside? Huh? Holy Ghost on the inside. Somebody said heaven's brass. It shouldn't bother you. <laughs> Seeing as all heaven's moved on the inside. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. <laughs> heaven's brass. Well, that shouldn't affect you at all. I mean, God's tabernacling on the inside of you now. You're good to go. But heaven's never brass. Because we in heaven. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 but if you do, see if you've got wrong faith then you're going to believe that Satan's going to say heaven's brass God's not listening to you it sounds good because some preacher said it yeah. Holy Ghost people say heaven's brass <laughs> we got a breakthrough and then you're going to live in doubt because you believe something that's wrong but when you believe that which Father said you build up yourself in most holy faith Whew. how are you going to do that Holy Ghost Holy Ghost what has he done he's come to lead us and guide us into all the truth Huh? Somebody was, I was ministering to some people with some ministers one day. Oh, nobody can know all the truth. I said, well, let's just go over here and look here now for a few minutes. <laughs> In John chapter 16. Now, the Holy Spirit has come to lead us and to guide us into some of the truth. <laughs> and everybody got all upset. And the judge tried to look over my shoulder and see what Bible I'm reading. Well, that's what you guys just said. Now you're all upset because I'm not reading it like you want me to read it out of the Bible. I'm reading it like you said it. Now you're all upset. Uh-oh. Jesus, help us. Your mind will play tricks on you. Don't count on it. <laughs> Your intellect will play tricks on you. Don't count on it. Live by the word. God said he's on the inside of me. I say, rise, oh God. Rise, oh God. I mean, you know, uh, Aaron would say, arise, oh God, and go before us against all of our enemies and let them be subdued. And, that, and the priest would bear up the ark and they would take it and begin to walk with it and all the enemies were subdued. And then they then Aaron just would cry out, O oh Lord, return unto the place of your rest and dwell in their midst. Come on, man. Is that giving you a clue about what you're supposed to do? I'm talking about walking and living by the Spirit. Huh? There are so many people that they don't have the things that God has promised them to have simply because they don't ask Him. They don't get direction and insight because they don't submit it to him and say, Father, I'm not going to make a move until you show me. And boy, have I ever been, uh, not even boy, man, have I ever been guilty of that. And Father is so merciful with us as he takes us through the process of learning to walk in the Spirit, live by the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, to learn the rules, the spiritual rules of uh, Putting on the mind of Christ. Hoorah, ba, ba. Having the mind of Christ. Uh, uh, putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. That you can actually put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Elisha saw Elijah go up in the fiery chariot. And when the Lord came and took him out of the earth realm. To be with him in the heavenly realm. And he's been there for well over 2,600 years now. Okay? And when Elijah went up his mantle, which is just nothing more than a, like a, a, a scarf, like a coat to some degree, something you can put over your head, something you can wear around your neck, something you can wrap around your body. It's a mantle. When it fell to the ground, Elisha picked it up. And with that mantle, what he does, the first thing he did, he smote the water and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where's the one behind the power? The, where's the power behind this mantle? Huh? And the water parted one to the right and to the left. And then you saw one miracle after another take place because he had a mantle. Well, the Lord said in the same respect, he said, I've given you the ability to be clothed. I've given you, in other words, the word there used to have the mantle. But you're going to have to learn the ways of the Spirit to have the mantle, to be endued, to put on, to have the Lord Jesus Christ as a mantle, as a cloak, and make no provision for the lust of the flesh. To make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. To make no provision for an earthly, self-centered realm to which the powers of darkness can ultimately grab a hold of and make you and, and cause you to begin to function in a way that is contrary to this glorious salvation that has been given to us. When I know who's on the inside and who's on the outside, I've got a clear line of division. 
I get a clear line of what's right and wrong, what's good and evil. I know where the, the defense is. I, and, and, and things are going off in my head. I'm not going, oh, no, it's, I got these evil thoughts coming from an evil heart. Well, if I got an evil heart after being born again, there's no hope for me because there's no other provision. Huh? No, I'm dealing with temptation. I'm dealing with the assaults of hell. Now, having been equipped by the Spirit because I have the insight of the Holy Ghost, where did I get the insight of the Holy Ghost from? Reading the Word of God, okay, from the ministry of the Spirit. Now, I can take the, that which the Lord has given me by the authority of His Word and by the authority of the Spirit, and now I can effectively deal with all of that stuff and say, you have no part in me. I don't want you. It doesn't belong to me. What I want, what I desire, hallelujah, is everything that He desires. When I know what I really want, when you know what you really want, you can go after it. A lot of people can't figure out what they're going to do with their life because they don't know what they really want. What do you want to do? I don't know. And it, you're not very motivated, right? And you can be easily persuaded to do a lot of different things when you don't know what you want to do. Huh? But when you know what you want to do, when you know who you are and what you want, come on. My goodness, when you know who you are and what, what you want, who you are is you're that person who's been made alive in Christ Jesus. These are the fundamental truths of the Holy Spirit that you and I have got to grab a hold of and learn how to walk in. When you and I understand that not only do, have we been received this wonderful blessing of the indwelling presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, but he's given us his desires, he's given us his heart, he's given us his spirit, then we know what, you know, we, know what we really want. And some come trying to play tricks with our mind as though we want something different. We know that it's a demonic lie. Not some desire that, we're, that we seem to be have a, a, an irresistible compulsion to do. It's a demonic lie. Now I am able to clearly see. Now having clearly been able to clearly see by the Word of God, I can take the authority that has been given to me by the Holy Ghost and deal with those demon spirits. Hallelujah. And they can't try to, they can't deceive me and say, this is what I want. This is, my emo this is some emotion. This is some thing that I can't live without. They can't deceive me. Because I've been over here in the school of the Spirit being taught the Word of God. I've been taught the Word of God so that I can live by the Word. Hallelujah. So that you can live in the Word. It is out of this realm that I begin in my, this relationship with the Lord. I, there, here is what the Holy Spirit is teaching me. This is what the school of the Spirit is all about. He's teaching us how to walk in the ways of the Father. First and foremost, he's teaching us how to just interact with the Father, come to the Father and receive from the Father, just have this relationship with the Father, how to now learn and be taught his ways and, and conduct ourselves in the realms of, of what, what we would refer to as the heavenly, the realms of the Spirit. So then out of that, then I can just begin to do, I can begin to do, I can begin to do just anything. I, you know, when I first, uh, you know, as an adult, gave my life to the Lord Jesus. I could, you really could, should say rededicated my life to the Lord Jesus and was baptized in the Holy Ghost because I didn't really, I didn't get baptized in the Holy Spirit until I was an adult, and until I was 19 years old. And um, and I got when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, I I want to. I had watched. I've been in church and ministry all my life. I've watched miracles, signs, and wonders. I had a good foundation of faith. But, you know, when I would say to people, you know, be healed and, and or you just you sometimes just simply say you don't have to have that in your life and, and incurable diseases. Wonderful signs and wonders and miracles took place. I didn't really feel anything when I did that. I didn't, I didn't feel any manifest presence of the Lord. But I did have a the, what I did have is I did have the working of the Holy Ghost in terms of the gift of faith. I knew it. I knew that this was going to happen. But then that ultimately, as I walk in the school of the Spirit, as I live by the Spirit, that grew into a place where I can experience the manifest presence of the Lord. Because I can experience, now what I've experienced and what I, can, what I have, and, and having received from the Lord, now I can give that. It, if you would have met me 34, five, 34 years ago, I could have ministered to you and helped you in the realms of the gift of faith, of having the Word of God, just knowing it's settled, it's true, this will work. Okay? And learn how to just, because it's first and foremost to get to faith is God said it, it's true, it's settled, it's done. This is what's going to happen. This is our expectation. Expectation and confidence is 95% of faith, as it were. The Holy Ghost just breathes on us, and we just know it's going to happen. This is going to happen. Hallelujah. 
Lourdes Verdenia. I like to tell the story of, of Margaret because, you know, she's here in the ministry. And I mean, it's just, just the whole context is just because it really makes things so, so makes things so normal. I mean, you know, we were just out for a run. We were just out for a run along the beach on long sunset cliffs. And she had a little, she had her inhaler. And uh, I looked over and I said, you don't need to have that in your life. Of course, I gave her a stern look. Because I didn't like that thing. It was an offense to me. At that, at that moment, it was an offense to me. You don't need that in your life. And she never had to have it. You know, she had it. She was dependent, dependent upon it. Chronic disease. The Lord totally healed her. But that's just how simple it is. We try to make it something that, oh, we got to go prayer for, you know, a long, long time. No, we don't need to do that. We need to just learn how to be real simple with God. We need to learn how to just relax. <laughs> we need to just learn how to trust him. He's the one who does it. He's made us the announcers. Really, this is it. The Lord made us the he made us the announcers. That's it. That's our responsibility, to go everywhere and preach, to proclaim. And he does the miracle. He does the signs and wonders. He does the work. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the beautiful thing of it is, is we get to feel the surging of his power and his presence through our life. I had and saw many workings of miracles through my life and the gifts of the Spirit, both the word of knowledge at work, prophecy at work, discerning of spirits at work, and I never one time felt the surging or manifest presence of the Lord in my life. Didn't. I was moved by the Word of God and by this, by this compulsion by the Holy Ghost to speak the Word of God and to believe the Word of God. It came later on in my life where, wow, I could literally feel the power of God surge through my life and go right out of my hand like a cone of, 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 of power. Just, but if you say, you know, if I tell people, man, I tell you, this is, this is what you got to get. Just hang out till you get this. Then you're going to like being going, well, man, my hand doesn't work. Still doesn't work. I still get no cone of power, nothing. Nothing. I'm like, cone of power. Nothing. Oh, God, what's wrong with me? You're going after the wrong thing, you see. Huh. Huh. You're going after the wrong. Th you're going after the wrong experience. People talk about all these various different things like gold dust and this and that and the other. And fine, I mean, just collect some of it. Let's take it to the bank. We need it. Put it in the offering basket. <laughs> collect it. Take it to the bank. Exchange it. Put the money in the offering basket. Praise God. You shouldn't keep any of that for yourself. Okay? But no one's done that up to this point. And yet so many people have seen this thing, that thing, and the other thing. And I just, no, just relax. Let's just get real simple here. This isn't hard. This is God at work. This is his idea. <laughs> he wants to do it. He's looking for somebody he can prepare. In other words, he's looking for someone he can train. Are you trainable? Do you want to be trained? Whether well, you're going to read the word. And you're going to participate with the word. Because when I read the word, even to this day, when I read the word, my hair will stand up on the back of my neck. When I'm reading about miracles, signs and wonders, I'm just like, wow. This is amazing. Every time. And how many times have I read it? I've read it so many times. I, I was brainwashed before I was three years old with these stories by my mother. Reading me these, my mom, in my, my house, my house. You didn't go to bed before Bible reading was done. Huh? We made, mom made sure we got through the Bible at least once a year. You had to go through the Bible. Come on, praise God for that. But yet, every it doesn't matter how familiar I am with him. If I, I, if by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I begin to tell about what Jesus did, man, the atmosphere will change. Come on. Somebody can be on a, on a, on a video, a film, a cassette tape, talking 60 years ago about what Jesus did, and boom, you can feel it. You can feel his manifest presence. You can feel his peace. You, you can at least feel his peace. Praise God. When you're born of the Spirit, you first, you get to feel the peace. Isn't that wonderful? Mm. And the joy. Praise the Lord for that. And I wonder why the Lord lets us feel that. Because he just wants us to feel good. Huh? He just wants us to feel good. No, that's not the only reason. <laughs> that's not the only reason. He wants us to know what it's like being around him so that we can understand what it's like when we're not around him. 
<laughs> he wants us to understand what it feels like when we're interacting with him so that we know when we're not interacting with him. Why? Because he really wants to lead us and guide us and teach us and train us. And I'm telling you right now, this is the hardest thing. Even brilliant people don't get this. I mean, it's like, you know, this very bright guy came to me one time and was like, I think I finally got it. I said, he said, I don't really know what's wrong with me, but I, after 15 years, I think I finally got it. What you're saying is that really the Lord's speaking to us when we're happy. <laughs> that we're allowing him to speak to us through the, through the atmosphere of joy. There you go. Now, what are you going to do with that? Just do that for the rest of your life. Will kick in when the joy starts. It's like a, it's like a, uh, what are they? Voltage regulator, huh? It's like a voltage reg regulator, right? As soon, right, right. Have you ever noticed that? As soon as you start getting into this hard place, huh? And maybe you know you're just kind of getting busy with things, and the and, and the joy certain or the love or the glory. And it gets to a certain point and boom, rasa kara rada bebeke tere be shabra ba bakata shalara bebeke kia tada na na ba bakata shalara ba ili era si ara na na te vredi. Because the Holy Ghost, see, I was in my, in in who? Itana mo gea na si lia no pa ta ni ike in malano si prede. Now, ha 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 ha. Lelishe te ro. Oh my, yeah. See, we're just going to have to have one meeting a week where we, who caught us yet, Buddha, where we don't have to be sober or tell anybody anything. Just cannot almost brand name and lose the English language, and go over in that realm. Who rabba basa geli sheka? Who who mandan bede etuyo? Who hallelujah? His presence so wonderful. Hallelujah, mumbru sataya. Who yeshikina namase? It is suna namumbru tasaneya. What is praying in the Holy Ghost like? It's like it would be compared to, can I do this? I'm just trying to emphasize something. It would be like Moses, Elijah, and, uh, and Daniel come laying hands on you and praying over you for about two weeks straight. Huh? And then you get to do that inside of, uh, you know, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Huh? And you don't need anybody but the Holy Ghost around you. And it don't matter where you're at. But it's more than that because it's God Almighty praying for you and through you. I'm going to try to say this. I'm going to try to say this. But I'm going to say something to you. I'm going to say something to you that is a, it is a huge thing in my life. And anything that's, when it gets to be that big, you try to talk about it, and, it gets, and it's difficult to talk about it because you just go right over into glory land. Huh? Hallelujah. <laughs> well, one day, I was a Rumanai in a Sete. I was a Borosinanai, Kekimon Borosifi. And I was a Bana in a Sete Lamosia. I was a Bokarinea. I was reading it. Hallelujah. I was up all night. Rodamon. Erasine. Ikanamosita. Halabisanu. Hallelujah. You notice the change of the language, eh? You notice the change of the language. There's a reason for that. And, you know, the school of the Spirit is all about you learning to discern the movings of the Spirit. You can learn to discern the movings of miracles, the gifts of healing. You can learn when is a tongue to be interpreted or something that is just a deeper realm of revelation or a impartation. There, you know, I, I believe every activity of the Holy Ghost, every atmosphere of the Holy Ghost is reflected in the language of the Spirit. It's being spoken. But I was radosi. I was reading Amaya. I was reading my Canaanite. I was reading Romans chapter 8. 
And I begin to see it. I begin in a city. Hallelujah. To Remiah. How that a simultaneity, verse 26, was making intercession for me. How that he was praying for me. And when something in the word of God becomes a living reality to you, when you get a revelation of it, it changes everything. Otherwise, it's just intellectual information. And you try to make a mental ascent with that. And you try to teach people about it. Well, this is what God. I mean, I was listening to a God the other night. And he was just teaching. I mean, he was talking about the word. And it, by and large, he was relatively accurate with what he was saying. No Holy Ghost. No Spirit of God. M mental ascent. Just men. But what happens if you want the things of the Spirit, if you're hungry for the things of the Spirit, the Lord's going to fill you up with more than you can possibly contain and is going to come busting out of you like water breaking forth like rivers. I came to deal with, I came to understand that the Holy Spirit knew about my weaknesses, knew about my immaturity, knew about my frailties, knew the areas that I needed to be developed in, understood the will of the Father, the mind of Christ, the purposes of God for my life, and that he was making intercession for me, that he was praying not apart from me, but on the inside of me with groanings, uh, longings, s sounds issued that could not be uttered. Changed my life. That's better than Moses, Elijah, and Daniel praying for you for, 20, for, two, for 21 days. For 21 days. They don't let up. And when you sleep in there, they're praying. For you to step into everything that they have and more. Mm -mm -mm. Isn't, that, isn't it the Lord amazing? No. So he said, well, I want that. You do? Well, then read your Bible. How hard is that? Oh, I want that. Well, it's easy to say, oh, I want that, but how about reading your Bible? Because that's where I got it. I was just reading my Bible like any other time, and boom. Huh? What if I wouldn't been reading my Bible? Then it would have never been a reality to me. That didn't happen to me in church. That happened to me in reading my Bible. Because I'm hungry and thirsty for him, because I want to know him, because I want to walk with him. If you begin to read your word, if you begin to read the Bible, you'll begin to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. You'll begin to hear him speak to you. Scriptures will just stand out and loom out at you and grab a hold of you. Hallelujah. I have never been in a meeting. I've never been in a condemnation meeting. Ever. I've been in some of the most radical, fiery preachers. You better get it right. He's going to bust hell open tonight. And I've never been in condemnation meetings. I've had been in meetings where preachers are, will preach from the clothesline and run down the list of every possible thing you could be doing wrong. And I'm like, yes, Lord. Yes. I've never been in a condemnation meeting. Why? Because I want it all. I'm here, I'm here to change me, oh God. I, yes, I do that too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Make it a reality to me, Father. Come on now. People talk about I was in a condemnation meeting. I've never been in one. You should take me to one sometime so I can experience it. I've been in church all my life. I've not experienced one yet. Hallelujah. People talk about condemnation. I went over to your place and I was condemned. No, you weren't condemned. You were reproved and you so stubborn and rebellious you don't want to change. That's all you are in condemnation. It's we're telling you you wrong and you don't want to get changed. You, we're telling you wrong and you don't want to be right. And if you're not listening to Holy Ghost any more than that, my goodness, you haven't even begun. Huh? Because Holy Ghost is going to talk to people who are listening. He's going to talk. He's going to speak louder and louder and more clear to you with the gentlest voice. Huh? Elijah knew. I believe that Elijah already knew that he, he was going to be taken up, that he was going to die. Because he says, why am I different from my fathers? Let me die now. That statement is a pretty profound statement. And he goes to Horeb, and he stands at the mouth of the cave. And there came a great wind that exploded the rocks. But the Lord wasn't in the wind. It rent the earth and exploded rocks. Then there came an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. 
Then there came a fire, which is profound, right out of God, right out of the realms of heaven. Where was in the fire? Then a still small voice. And a still small voice. And what still, still small voice said? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's usually what the Lord's got to say first off. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, the school of spirit is a <laughs> uh, the school of the spirit. Where does the Lord teach us to hear him? Reading his word. Hearing his word. Being taught his word. That's why it's so important to be around ministry that's delivering you the word. I shut off. I have friends of mine that listen to things. They just listen to, you know, Hank Hanegraaff and some of these other guys. And I say, I look at him and I'm going down the road with him and I'm going, why do you listen? They're talking about you, actually. Why do you even listen? I don't know. I just like to listen. I mean, why even engage? I can't. I don't like to listen. To it. I, I just turn it on. I don't even want to. I'm just like, you're a bigger man than I am, man, because I don't even want to listen to that garbage. I don't even have, I don't want it polluting me. Huh? Uh huh? I used to work with this very brilliant but kind of flaky scientist. His name is Ron Botton. He would always say, he would always say don't say anything. You're going to contaminate my pure thoughts. Let me think it through first. <laughs> I don't want any other outside influences till I get this done. Then when I'm certain about it, I'm willing to take comments. Hey, I mean, come on, shut in with God. He's shutting in with himself and his intellect and his brilliance. Huh? How about us shutting in with God? Say, so, wait a minute, I don't want that other influence. I, I just want to shut in over here. That's why it's so important to be in a church where people are preaching the word of God, where they're declaring it on the level, not diluting it so it's palatable, not diluting it so it kind of fits into your life and you don't have to feel uncomfortable. Oh, bring the fire, oh God. Oh, let it burn hotter. I was saying that one night, and a, and a preacher said, oh, don't say that. <laughs> oh, because it's going to get bad. If you say that, it's going to get bad. Because God's going to bring it. My goodness, you're going to be in all kinds of trouble. Fire! <laughs> Lord, increase this in our, my life, in our life. Whatever it takes to bring us into a place where we can hear clearly and we can do exactly what you want us to do, where we can begin to function in this wonderful, beautiful realm. See, people think that it, uh, stories about Elijah are just stories. No, they're not. It's a, man, it's a man saying, hey, guys, I found another realm to live in. You want to come in? It's an invitation. It's, it's men who lived and walked with God who are declaring to us that there is another way to live. And there is an invitation that all of us can come step over there. When you begin to believe that, there is a possibility for you to have it. God will show you how to go there. If you don't believe it, oh, that was for Elijah. Oh, I wish I was Elijah. Well, actually, Elijah was wishing he was you. He was wishing he could be where you're at right now. They saw, they prophesied of, the, uh, uh, of, of this wonderful glory and of this wonderful gospel. They saw a long way off. When they were ministering about the grace of God and the glory that should come to us. And they realized that it was unto us that they ministered and not unto themselves. First Peter chapter 1 verse 12. Huh? They were looking over here in our day. Hey, I'm not going to get up there and get some glares. Just glares. Elijah glaring at me. Dude. <laughs> you guys had it. I mean, I had just like a fraction of what you did had and I just did so much more you guys had everything and you did nothing I'm not doing that I'm not doing that I'm not doing that I, I, I know I, I know some people got revelation that there is actually a nosebleed section in heaven no 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 now listen I'd rather be in the nosebleed section than not any section at all but nonetheless that there's the balcony runs so far out, you know, that you in the upper bleachers, all the way in the back wall. I'm not going to be back there. I'm not going to be back. I don't want to be back. And it really is all about how much, how much intimacy you wanted with him now. How serious you were about it now. Huh? Because everybody's going to be serious then. Everybody. Huh? 
I've lived, to, I've lived through different situations where people become famous and everybody's crowded around them and then all of a sudden their newness wears off and then everybody starts dispersing to go crowd around the new guy. Start dispersing. Go crowd around the new guy because that's the way humans are. Huh? And then the people that stay over here with these different men of God and still love the people the same way, this is very, those are the people that have tried the test of, of truth. Where are we at with Jesus? Where are we at with the Holy Ghost? Are we coming to know him so well that we just want to be around him more? Or do we just like, well, we're kind of neutral about it. God, you know where I'm at. If you want to use me, you in charge. You sovereign. Amen. So you're not getting anything. There's some people I'm going to glare at when I get to heaven. That I read in the Bible and they're just like, Oh, well, whatever seemeth good in his sight. Nonsense. <laughs> whatever seemeth good. You need to repent. Whatever seemeth good in his sight. You hold in the mantle. You hold in the torch for your generation. You, your decisions are making a lot of difference here. Oh, whatever seemeth good. No, sir. No. Hallelujah. So the Lord's called us to glorify him in his body and our body and our spirits, and only the Holy Spirit can show us how. Just people, I just want you to grab a hold of tonight how easy it is to walk in the spirit, how simple it is to understand whether you're walking in the spirit or not, and living by the spirit. So the Lord's not the Lord's not having a relationship with anybody who's offline. It's a participation. Just interact with them. Don't, you kind of mean, honest, don't feel good. You need to start feeling good right now. And the provision for you to feel good is available at this very moment. And when you begin to be faithful with God in these things, when you begin to be faithful with God, and look, I, I was around when the true words of knowledge were coming forth, when they were powerful words of knowledge. I was around when there was miracles that were so credible. And I know what the basis and the foundation of these men of God and women of God's life were. They were exactly what I am describing. They didn't go after, they coveted spiritual, the spiritual, and they believed and wanted and laid hold of the supernatural and the working of spiritual gifts, but they were going after Christ Jesus. They were going after the realms of learning to function and flow in the things of the kingdom of God. Listen, these things are about our... Uh, it's, about, it's given to us to minister, to break off the yoke, to loose the heavy bands. This is what the Lord wants. This is the fast that he has chosen. And if we're willing to do it, if we're willing to participate with it, wherever you're at right now, whatever testimony you have in, right now in your mouth, it is powerful enough to break the yoke and loose the heavy bands. You don't have to wait to someday in the future. These things are yours right now. These things are yours right now. If you've done wrong, if you sin, you repent, you ask the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you, and then you just move on with God, you need to recognize that those devils aren't persuaded that you're true and sincere, so you need to get girded up a little bit more than, huh? It's always best not to get in it. It's easier. All you're doing, all you're doing is create even more problems on your head, creating more problems for yourself when you don't walk in the Spirit. The mind of Christ, the mind of the things, minding the things of the Holy Ghost. You just make a commitment. Okay, Lord, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, this is what I want. See, when you've got something swimming around in your head, some accusation of somebody, you grab a hold of the truth of God's Word and say, no, I'm not having that. Holy Ghost, I want the, your mind. I want the mind of Christ. And you begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And as you do, He'll fill you. He'll build you up. In other words, He'll strengthen you. And the strength that he will give you is the strength of the Lord and power of his might. Is that pretty radical? Yes. He that prays in an unknown tongue builds himself up. And it shouldn't really be that way. I'm going to just read this first scripture to you. It really shouldn't be that way. And then I'm going to close here. Okay? And then you're going to go practice. Yes. So I came over to the meeting. I thought we were going to practice giving each other word of knowledge. No, we're going to practice talking to the Holy Ghost first. 
and letting him flow through us. Because the word of knowledge is simply the Holy Spirit flowing through us without our effort. I've had, I've had the greatest moves of God, manifestations of God in my life when I was putting the least amount of effort into it. Not trying to do anything, not trying to say anything, just steal before him. Verse 4. Let me say this to you. Verse 4 of 1 Corinthians 14. I'm going to just say this to you. Verse 4 should really read like this. He that speaks in the language, the language of the Spirit or the, or the tongues, which we know what that means, the language of the Spirit. He that speaks in the language of the Spirit strengtheneth himself. Because the Lord has told us to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. We are strengthening ourselves in who? Strengthening ourselves in ourselves? We're strengthening ourselves by yielding to the Holy Ghost who's strengthening us. Because it's the Holy Spirit praying. He's speaking through us. He's praying for us. It's the Spirit of the Son crying, Abba, Father. It's the activity and the working of the supernatural power of God on our behalf. Beautiful, 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 isn't it? Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? So now you know how to be strength. If you didn't know, of course, I'm sure that most of you probably already knew this. That's how you strengthen. That's how you become strong in the strength of the Lord and power of his might. And the more you give yourself to these things, the stronger you get in them. It's like, it's like, just like everything else in the natural world. The natural world reflects what's going on in the spiritual world. The spiritual world is reflected by what's going on in the natural world. I won't allow myself, I won't allow myself to get too weak or too run down or too flabby or too slow. Because I'll, I'll, get myself, I'll get myself into a serious work out of pain. Huh? Won't we? Won't we? I can't do what Ruthie can do anymore. I mean, she came in from a run. Oh, I doubt it. I just did the first mile in five minutes. Five and a half minutes. And that's her, she's out of shape right now. And I would probably have killed over <laughs> at that pace. I had to build up, you know. But I give myself to that because I, mean, I want to be, I want to keep strong, I want to keep fit. More than that, in godly exercise, bodily exercise profit is little. But if you exercise godliness, what are we talking about? Exercise God, obeying God, participating with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Siporanaya. Sibritiki. Amen. Amen. Well, I only pray when I feel like it. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I only exercise when I really feel like it. Are you with me? Hmm. The good thing is that I can stand in here tonight and I'm very comfortable knowing that if I said to everyone, begin praying the Holy Ghost, you would all do it. Now, listen, there's whole Pentecostal movements that if I said that, they would all look at me going, what are you talking about? We can't pray in the Holy Ghost until like the end of the meeting. Because we've got to get into a specific state. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. It's like, it's like that's, that's like the big move. That's when everything else is shut out finally. And now we're so fully yielded. Now the Holy Ghost begins to do it. Well, it's because it just, that's better than nothing. The reality of it is, is this guy, a gift and opportunity can happen any time. That's right. That is true. That is true. You know, there's been, ever again been a big argument. Does the Spirit of the Lord come upon you and remain, or does he come on and then leave? Because it, 
and because in the Old Testament, you know, basically the Spirit of the Lord would come upon them, and it was just the Spirit of the Lord lifted off of him. And I'm afraid that I'm afraid that too many people live in an Old Testament experience where the Spirit of the Lord comes upon them, as it were, and then leaves. I don't want him. I don't want him going anywhere. He's here, and he abides forever. Amen. Amen. To just have a clear knowledge that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. That he abides in you. He's the temple of the Holy Ghost. And that even even in your weakness and your frailty, he's there making intercession for you. Hallelujah. Now, if you just come right out and out sin, I'm going to tell you right now what he's going to be doing. He's going to be grieving you until you come to your knees in repentance. And if you don't bow and you don't repent, I guarantee he's going to leave. I can sh- prove that to you. Ain't no doubt about that. But the beautiful thing of it is, if you get right, he'll come back. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want you to pray in the Holy Ghost with me. for. Is there a dobar on the Or a stakara na masepe premeneshe. La raba kasebre de peteo to. Ho. La membre de kerara masoton de la de vikiyeshe. La ramamba de la deve. Zere setan de la deshe. Zere seban de la leke shibaru no mando. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Robosaya. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we beg you to let us be. Has your remaining list of burdens allowed us to keep the burden of our sins? We beg you to let us be for the faith. Lord, the band of the people is this. Lord, I'm ready to keep the name of the Lord. The band of the people is this. Lord, I'm ready to keep the name of the Lord. The band of the people is this. Lord, I'm ready to keep the name of the Lord. The band of the people is this. Lord, I'm ready to keep the name of the Lord. The band of the people is this. Thank you, Lord, that you open up our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy name, Lord. Praise your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, is there anybody here with, you you have any pain in your body? Anybody with pain in your body? Anybody with any kind of pain, headaches? Heartaches, any kind of pain, anybody dealing with? What's wrong? Anybody else with any pain? Pain's going to go when Jesus down and take authority over pain. Now, out of that same realm, if it's real, there's a proof of its reality. To be able to, because when we be demanda pramana yatasiya, we're supposed to excel. And the excel that what because that, that's what the Holy Ghost uh, ultimately begins to pray through us, for the purposes of having us function and operate like He does, move as He does, to supply the gift of faith, to supply the working of miracles, to supply the gifts of healing. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I command pain to go. Feel it go? Why? Because Buddha teaches me to speak to pain. So you can speak to pain? Yeah. How did you learn how to do that? You mean you can be joyful in a time where everybody else is afraid? Yeah. How'd you do that? You mean you're practicing translation? How do you practice translation? So I commission you now in the name of Jesus to begin to give yourself throughout the day to a period of time of just sitting and praying in the Holy Ghost. Just sit and pray. Take yourself a couple of 10-minute breaks throughout the day. You know, when people are working really hard, we try to take care. Huh? The Lord tells us to take care of our beast. 
right? He does. A righteous man tended to the needs of his, of his animals. And then, of course, we got people working for us. A righteous person all the more takes care of his people that are working for them. So we take care of people and give them a 10-minute break, right? Because they're on the end of the load. They're under the yoke. They're working hard, right? And so you're working hard. You're laboring. You need to take a break, 10-minute break. And then find out what the Lord will do in that. And then what's going to happen is over time, the Holy Spirit will call you to prayer because you're available. You know how to respond. And then, all of, and, then, and then in that state, prayer will become easy. Amen? Just go out and walk around the building. If you work here, you work here. Just walk. Let it grow. Let it grow. Father knows that, you know, you're sitting there and you're maybe watching television or something and you're just resting and relaxing, trying to recover from a difficult day. He knows what it means for you to turn that thing off. And begin to start. Wherever it is that you start. And then it begins to. And then you, you begin to give yourself to that realm. You're going to have yourself some interaction. You're going, you're going to discover the teachers there. There's where, there's where the gifts of the spirit will begin to explode in your life. Hallelujah. Anybody else with any pain in your body. What's wrong? What's wrong? Huh? A cold? Your toe. Your toe. Oh, your toe. You get pain in your toe? Something wrong with your toe? Be healed in Jesus' name. What's wrong with your toe? Joint pain? In the name of Jesus, I command that joint to be restored and become normal. Be whole as the other one. Start wiggling it around a little bit. What's your name? Joanna. Joanna. Have you accepted Jesus into your life? He's come in. You live in there. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Well, when, when you receive the Holy Ghost, see, at, in Acts chapter 19, Paul, you know who Paul was? He... Paul says to the people that he runs into in Acts chapter 19, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They didn't know either. So you know what he did? He laid his hands on them. And you know what they did? They all began to speak with, Stop. They didn't teach that over there where you're going to church? Uh-uh. You know why? Because they don't know anything about it. You can't tell anything about it. You can't teach anything that you don't know anything about, right? <sighs> Joanna, would you like everything to begin to change in your life? Would you, like to, would you like to know the Jesus of the Bible in a greater way? Who died and went to hell? Did you know that Jesus died and went to hell? Did you know that? He died and went to hell. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And then, after being seen of the brethren for about 40 days, he sinned up in heaven, sat down at the right hand of the Father, and poured out the Holy Ghost. He told everybody who belonged to his church, he said, Go tarry in Jerusalem. Go tearing the church by application until you receive power from on high. He said, because he described himself as the one who baptizes in the Holy Ghost. That's the ministry of Jesus. He, says, I'm a, he said, I'm going to go away. And I'm going to send another one for you to minister, to minister to you, to lead you, to guide you, to teach you. And so we live in the days of the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Did you know that? These are the days of the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.
Okay, well, I'm done. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit's going to take it from here with each person individually. It's breakout meetings now. One-on-one <laughs> -on -one breakout meetings. You and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Love you. Make sure. To, so he said, I just want to grow in love. Well, then participate. And how do you do that? Hug people. Tell them that you love them. Amen. Amen. It's really all that simple, isn't it? It's just, easy. It's just so easy. Whew. Hallelujah. Keep cutting.